Welcome to November. It's good to know that you made it. Yes, an attitude of gratitude can brighten any dark day. Let's endeavor to make the most of the month by focusing on positive vibes and spreading love. Welcome to this Wednesday edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm your host, Adrian Atkinson. Coming up, we look at the work to help those in the disabled community secure employment, plus some healthy lifestyle tips. We'll be right back after this quick break. Stay with us. Get involved as we transform education for national development. Join the Ministry of Education and Youth at the Jamaica College Auditorium for a town hall meeting on Thursday, November 2 at 6 p.m. Let your voice be heard as we discuss ways to reform the education sector for a brighter tomorrow. That's a town hall meeting on education transformation. Come or connect to our live stream on the JIS, MOEY and PBCJ social media platforms. Transforming education for national development for a brighter tomorrow. Today, I'm Lisa Rowe and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, November 1, 2023. The earthquake unit at the University of the West Indies Mona campus has sought to explain the intensity of the 5.6 magnitude quake experienced by the country on Monday. The earthquake occurred in Buff Bay, Portland, which is the same general vicinity as the 4.9 magnitude quake that was felt on September 21 this year. The area is also referred to as the Blue Mountain Block, which is the fault block across Jamaica. Research fellow at the earthquake unit, Kevin Tanku, says preliminary data has estimated the maximum intensity, which is the level of shaking, to seven. Just to differentiate, magnitude is the energy released, right? So this number does not change. Intensity is the shaking experience at a certain location. So someone's Someone who is in Portland might have a different intensity from someone who is probably in St. Catherine or Clarendon or so. Mr. Tanko was among several key stakeholders giving updates from their sectors at the National Disaster Risk Management Committee meeting on Tuesday. At the time of the meeting, Mr. Tanko informed that 70 aftershocks had been registered following Monday's earthquake. He said more was expected. Also, so far this year, the country has had 11 felt earthquakes, with three of them being significant. These were in St. Thomas and Portland in April, September and October. Yesterday being one of the largest that we've recorded in quite some time, I believe, um, yes, in terms of shaking, um, Sir Thompson, um, 93. But again, this probably even um, go back to 1957, right, to Montego Bay earthquake in terms of intensity. So it's been quite overdue in terms of um, experiencing something. But this is uh, another reminder in terms of um, how we build, how we design, how we actually look at our mitigation preparedness, our response mechanisms. Also coming out of the meeting is a report that most roads impacted by Monday's earthquake have been cleared. The exceptions are the Papin to Bull Bay Main Road in St. Andrew, as well as the Mahogany Vale to Hagley's Gap, and the Richmond Vale Roads in St. Thomas. That update came from Stephen Shaw, Manager of Communication and Customer Services at the National Works Agency, NWA. Mr. Shaw says recent heavy rains also contributed to much of the land slippage seen during Monday's tremor. The challenge that, that we see too um, in the next couple of days, outside of that which we have not yet ex witnessed, is with the impending rainfall, Richard. Um, we are kind of nervous with, with that because if, if, the, if a lot of water is dumped on us um, and with the tremor that we saw, there is going to be more rock falls, we believe, in areas that we know are susceptible. In the meantime, Mr. Shaw has sought to clarify requests from the public for the NWA to carry out assessment of buildings with suspected damage stemming from the earthquake. Our response has been that where it is that a, a building is the responsibility of government, we, though in this kind of situation we, we are going to be stretched thin, you know, we, we, we can give a commitment to looking at those. Where it is that government 
operates our government entity, department, or organization is operating in a rented facility, then we are suggesting that the landlords be contacted. The NWA further recommends that persons seek private registered and reputable engineers as the agency is stretched thin while committing that some key buildings will be given attention. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Education and Youth is reporting that 97 schools have seen some impact as a result of the 5.6 magnitude earthquake. Senior Director of Technical Services in the Ministry, Kerry Brown, made the announcement. According to Mr. Brown, the report is currently more serious in Region 1, which has 38 schools affected. This is followed by Region 2 with 16 schools and Region 6 with 14 schools. There is a critical incident management plan which informs how our schools should proceed in the event of an earthquake or any act such as this. We are in the, during the process of the earthquake, the, the teacher or the person instructing the class will instruct the students are the safety requirements go on the table or stand or a door jam. Mr. Brown says building officers assigned to the ministry have been dispatched across all regions to assess the extent of damage to school infrastructure. Appropriate action will be taken where damage has been identified. At the same time, the ministry will continue to offer psychological support to students who were affected by the earthquake. Health facilities saw an increase in cases of trauma, depression and anxiety resulting from Monday's earthquake. Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says this is expected in disasters of this kind and a number of avenues are available to deal with these issues. He was speaking at an emergency press conference on Monday. Bustamante Hospital, Kingston Public and the University Hospitals have all reported increased visits from, to their emergency departments. Uh, cases involving primarily students and uh, suffering from anxiety. Minister Tufton says several children were seen at the Bustamante Hospital, a few with mild head injuries, most with anxiety and no physical injury that were assessed and discharged. Older children with similar cases were also seen at the accident and emergency departments of the Spanish Town, Linstead and Kingston Public Hospitals. The health ministry is encouraging persons experiencing symptoms such as difficulty breathing, chest and muscle pain, feeling faint or lightheaded, stomach aches, feelings of anger or anxiety resulting from the quake, to see a physician in a public or private care facility or use less intensive avenues to minimize effects. There are other uh, less intense ways to manage these types of mental wellness or mental health challenges. Um, talking to a friend or family member encourage others to remain safe, getting rest, re-establishing a return to routine, and just asking for help if you, if you need that help. Persons with anxiety and other mental challenges can seek help by calling 888-NEW-LIFE. That's 888-639-5433. Persons can also reach out to the You Matter chat line by messaging the word support to 876-838-4897 on WhatsApp and SMS or at you Report Jamaica on Facebook Messenger. And finally, the Ministry of Education says several initiatives are underway to improve literacy among children. These include the pilot phase of the Literacy Education Acceleration Program LEAP within six schools in Regions 1 and 4. We have results and we are quite impressed with the results. Ten hours of intervention on this program resulted in improvements by eight months in reading and six months in spelling. The Education Minister says 60% of the treatment group improved at least one grade level, 29% saw improvements of two or more grade levels, and 10% by three or more grade levels. So we have something here that we hopefully can scale up across the system to help our children with literacy. Minister Williams says a positive results are also being achieved from another pilot program being undertaken in several schools, the Creative Language-Based Learning Foundation. 
Meanwhile, reading books from LMW publishers will be provided to targeted schools through the Ministry's Literacy 123 program. We are going to make available to the children um, in the schools in which we are targeting so that no one can say they have nothing to read. Minister Williams is encouraging reading among children with support from parents. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Lisa Rowe. Thanks for watching. American Health Organization has reported that over the last seven months there have been over 2 million cases of dengue and over 700 cases of dengue related death in Latin America and the Caribbean region. Jamaica continues to see an increase in the number of cases. Dengue is a preventable disease. Every effort must be made to stop the mosquito that caused dengue from breeding and from biting. At least once per week Search and destroy mosquito breeding sites around your homes, schools, workplace, and communities. Use mosquito repellent that contains DEET. Open your windows and doors during fogging. Let's work together to prevent dengue. Our health is always our number one priority. Here in Jamaica, the government is working to combat challenges caused by non-communicable diseases. Learn more about one of the initiatives from the Ministry of Health and Wellness that is driving Jamaica's healthy lifestyle movement. Moving for a healthier you is the passionate call to action by the Ministry of Health. And it's creating waves across the country as Jamaica moves to tackle non-communicable diseases and CDs through regular physical exercise and proper nutrition. Within schools, the Healthy Lifestyle program is being rebranded through the Healthy Youth Positive Energy Hype Initiative. The reality is that seven of every ten Jamaicans would die each year. And we have about 18 to 20,000 deaths in our country each year die from what we classify as non-communicable diseases. Lifestyle diseases, to put it simplistically. And it's all about our physical inactivity and our consumption patterns, our habits. The Ministry of Health is on a mission to change that by getting every Jamaican to engage in at least 30 minutes of physical exercise daily. In fueling this fitness revolution, the Ministry launched the Jamaica Moves campaign under the theme, More Moments, More Memories and More Life. If you do what we are promoting, then as the tagline says, you'll have more moments, more time to spend with your family, your friends, do what you enjoy, more memories, capture all of those lovely memories and more life. Through promotional events across the island, the ministry is showcasing entertaining exercise workouts that persons can go home and practice. Free medical checks are also being provided. It's part of the preventative healthcare method and that's the approach that we're trying to take before we get to the part of the curative side, which is hospital care. Rarely do we speak about the need to change our lifestyle in our own interests as individuals. And it is cheaper to do that. A third of your income, according to the World Bank, if you get heart arthritis, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and all the others that are linked to lifestyle, a third of your disposable income, the World Bank says, will end up being spent on treating those ailments. So it, it affects the bottom line and your pocket also. Many persons like this man can testify to the benefits of living a healthy lifestyle which extend beyond monetary savings. All my family have diabetes. One night, I see my hand hook up like this, pull in and get cramp. My feet then start to cramp. The morning, I put on my clothes, get ready and go to the doctor. He do my blood sugar level and it was 20, 29.5. And he said, oh my God, you almost killed yourself. So the doctor said, I know what to do, Mr. Reed. He says, yes, sir. 
So I was weighing at, at the time 285 pounds with a big tummy like this. So he said, go and cut out your belly. And you know what I mean. So I said, I understood, doctor. I'm going to change my diet and I'm going to take up exercise 1 million percent. So I start off by one mile back and forth till I end up doing 10 miles. Exercise is the key to good health. Eat right, change your diet, less carb. Remember to put the running shoes right at your, at, at your bed. As you step out of your bed, you step in. And the first thing, you drink one cup of water before you move. And eat a lot of fruit, eat a lot of greens, and always have one glass of, blend, of the green juice every week. Dedicating 30 minutes out of every day to physical exercise may seem a big challenge, but begin with just one step and you'll find it becomes manageable. Regular exercise helps prevent damage to your heart's artery from high cholesterol, high blood sugar and high blood pressure that can lead to heart attack or stroke. Medical experts say aerobic exercises also improve the body's blood circulation and reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes while helping to control blood glucose in persons living with diabetes. There are exercises tailored to building muscle and losing weight, increasing strength and improving flexibility. The reality is many of us don't practice healthy living, so we need more people to do it and by doing it, encourage others so to follow. Staying fit and healthy is everybody's business, so get moving for better health. Institute of Jamaica returns with the Dialogue for Development Lecture, Thursday, November 2 at 10 a.m. Stanford University Fellow and Dean Emeritus of NYU Stern School of Business, economist Dr. Peter Blair Henry will speak on the theme Beyond 60, Evolving, Innovating, Inspiring. That's the PIOJ Dialogue for Development Lecture, 10 a.m. November 2. Reserve your virtual space at pioj.gov.jm. Jamaica is making moves to assist persons living with a disability to receive formal employment. Learn more about how the new Disabilities Act is getting the job done. Although it's only been a year since the new Disabilities Act came into effect, the law has been ensuring positive changes in the lives of persons with disabilities. This is especially so as it relates to strides being taken to increase the number of disabled people being employed. Since the Act, local companies have assisted in training young people with disabilities on how to write resumes and prepare for work. Executive Director of the Jamaica Council for Persons with Disabilities, Dr. Christine Hendricks, says more companies have become proactive. We have seen definite um, effort on the part of companies in terms of uh, whether retrofitting their spaces, uh, writing or drafting po inclusive policies to include persons with disabilities, or indicating that they would require training for their staff and engaging us at the JCPD to help to facilitate the provision of materials you know, so that they can um, make that training available to their staff. But training is not the only area where decisive action is being taken. The new act has piqued individuals and companies' interests regarding matters affecting persons with disabilities. Dr. Hendricks says local companies have expressed worry that disabled persons are not applying for positions at their companies. She says the council is helping to change that. We did indicate to them the availability of the website of the Jamaica Council for Persons with Disabilities, that whenever they have positions to make it available to us because we have a network of the disability sector that we can share you know, such information with whenever we get it. The Jamaica Council for Persons with Disabilities is also recruiting to assist in the employment of disabled persons. In its first year as a body corporate, 
The entity is in the process of transitioning to being more independent from the Ministry of Labour and Social Security. So we too are in the process of recruiting and we ensure that the disability sector is aware of the positions that are available so that they too can apply because what better example you know to demonstrate than you know the council having you know the people who have disabilities here in its employ. One such employee is Angine Garrick, the council's receptionist. With the requisite training and her love of interacting with people, Angine's disability has not stopped her from finding gainful employment. She believes the act will continue to help other members of the disabled community get employed. There are a lot of persons out there with disability that need assistance and need, um, in jo need finding job placement. So yeah, I, I definitely think it will. And what of disabled people who want to be self-employed? Persons with disabilities do have the option of starting their own business, you know, and there are opportunities as we look at financial inclusion. And again, um, during Disabilities Awareness Week um, in December, we did have, along with the Bank of Jamaica, and other entities, the, the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce, looking, Companies Office of Jamaica, looking at how persons with disabilities are being included in their policies and in their programs to ensure that as they build out financial inclusion, persons with disabilities are not left out. Dr. Hendricks says the council also empowers individuals with disabilities. At the JCPD here, we also have programs where persons can um, apply for and receive grants for economic empowerment for their own business because you do have persons with disabilities who are into you know that independence and wanting to become their own uh, bosses you know and so they they do have that opportunity as well so that can be counted you know in the in the whole employment um, space Where we are now is that we have tasked our technical team to check on our structures and key in all of this is the what we refer to as multi-span structures, bridges, because where you have, and a good example would be the flyovers at three miles, those have multiple spans as you can see. A lot of our bridges have um, just abutments and so we, we, are, we, we are not too worried about those. It's the ones that you know you have two or three spans. Uh, with the movement um, you could have joints opening up and that kind of thing and we have seen that before for example on the structure going from Caymanas into Portmore um, that spans the Rokobre. So that was one of the ones that we were actually concerned about. So we are checking on those. We had uh, reports of a couple of corridors, roads in, in uh, Portland, St. Thomas, and St. Andrew being impacted. We have responded. The good thing is that there is no community right now that is inaccessible due to falling rocks, landslides, and the like. We, we are still responding to, for example, those huge boulders that are present on the road between Papine and Bull Bay. We do have some issues too in uh, St. Thomas along the Mahogany Vale to uh, 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 Hagley's Gap Road. The Richmond Vale Road in St. Thomas, we are responding to that. The challenge that, that we see too 
um, in the next couple of days outside of that which we have not yet ex witnessed is with the impending rainfall because if a lot of water is dumped on us um, and with the tremor that we saw there is going to be more rock falls we believe in areas that we know are susceptible. We are being bombarded with um, calls and requests for our engineers to come and look at buildings. Our response has been that where it is that a, a building is the responsibility of government, we, though in this kind of situation we, we are going to be stretched thin, you know, we, we, we can give a commitment to looking at those. Where it is that uh, government operates, our government entity, department, or organization is operating in a rented facility, then we are suggesting that the landlords be contacted and or, you know, persons seek uh, private engineers because it's, it's not possible for us to be able to um, look at all buildings that government might be functioning out of but some key ones of course we will give attention the key thing for us now is to ensure that our our structures are are safe I hope you were inspired, you learned something new, and now you're ready to play your part in making Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business. We would love to hear from you, so reach out to us via email at jamaicamagazine at jis.gov.jm. You can also find more content like this on our website at jis.gov.jm. Do join us again tomorrow for another informative edition of Jamaica Magazine. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Adrian Atkinson, One Love. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.